It's a Sony. Welcome to Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop with me, your host, Cool Dude Clem. Yes, here's that radio from the previous video. Now, as you may remember, I powered this up in the previous video and it's absolutely, completely dead. Does absolutely nothing. So we're going to take this apart and see if we can get this working. And I really hope I do because this has got a lot of nice features on it that I really would like to try out. Such as the single sideband compensator and uh, whatever this does. I don't know what's actually wrong with this. Won't know till we take a look inside. Let's see. Let's try not to break anything. I can already see lots of resistors and coils and capacitors. Okay, let's uh, that. Okay. Okay, well, that's uh I don't know if I did that or if um, that was already like that. That could certainly explain it. This isn't even connected to anything. I'm sure that's not how the speaker's supposed to be mounted. So let's just take a little look behind there. The more we can see of this thing, the more we know. Oh. Oh, that doesn't look very good. I, um, look at that. There's one wire completely not even soldered onto the speaker there. Well, looks like I'm going to get my soldering iron out, put the speaker back in how it should be. Um, just make sure I'm not stretching any wires here. Okay, we seem to be all right there. I think that's a little loose, so that could be screwed in a little bit up. Okay, let me get my soldering iron warmed up. We'll put the speaker back in properly and we'll see where we go from there. Okay, so first thing we're going to do is I'm just going to unsolder the speaker completely. And then we're going to screw it in right there, which is where it's supposed to be. Hmm, we might have a bit of a problem here. What's that? There's supposed to be some clips to hold in this speaker, and uh, they're, um, they're not there. So, yeah, um, I might just have to hot glue that in place and hope that holds. And there's not going to be much point in taking the speaker out at all, and I'm pretty sure there's nothing wrong with this speaker, so it should be alright. Anyway, I'm pretty sure the audio amplifier on this is working because when I turned the power on we did get a bit of a hum and I believe that was the power, the transformer in my power supply just interfering with it. Anyway, this on off switch does feel a little bit weird, there's no click on it. Whereas this selector switch right here You can hear a definite click with, when I put this in any of the three positions. But this one is completely silent. It just feels spongy and not really doing anything. Right, okay, so we're just going to solder. Well, I don't know why I keep saying we. I mean, I. I'm just going to solder a new wire onto the speaker now. I hope my ugly face isn't getting into the shot like it was last time. I really hate that when that happens. I edit the video and I notice my face is in the shot. And I try to keep my face out of shot as much as possible because I don't really... I don't really want you seeing that. So I'm usually totally unprepared, face-wise. I'm just going to attach that cable to this cable. Then I'm going to hot glue the speaker in place, but first I'm going to test the speaker to make sure that it's okay. I'm pretty sure it is, because 
And I'm pretty sure that's what I heard humming when I turned the power on. Okay, let's just again strip the ends of the wire there. We can take a double A battery or battery as we say here. Just connect that to the speaker and if we hear some pops we'll know the speaker's okay. Yeah. Speaker is absolutely fine. Right, now I'm just going to connect those to the existing speaker wires. And then I can operate on this thing without stretching any wires. Next thing to do will be put to be make this a little bit better, connect that back up, and we'll see what happens. Right, okay. Okay, there we go. There's the speaker with its new cable soldered onto the old cable and of course I will put some tape around that to insulate it so it doesn't short out on anything I think for now I'm just going to put that out there where it's going to be safe where it won't fall onto anything and damage it and we'll take a look at the thing that goes in there now that's about as close as I can get the camera let's just see if we can take a little look under the shield some silvered cardboard. No, sorry. Silvered plastic. And that looks a little bit loose. I think we're going to need to do something about that. Okay, first what we're going to do is when I can find my screwdriver. Sounds like Mum's having a lot of trouble downstairs. First, what we'll do is we'll just take the uh, screw out so we can get the shielding out completely. Don't really want to pull this one out as well. Well, okay. I've replaced that broken ribbon. Um, ribble? I mean, ribbon! I've replaced that broken ribbon cable with these two cables here. I couldn't find an eight cable ribbon cable, so I've, I mean, so I've just taken a couple of four-way ones and I've connected those, soldered those onto where the original cable was. And guess what? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. It's on right now. Nothing. I won't tune into any stations. Nothing on the display, nothing coming out of the speaker. I think this might be one of those episodes where I just don't manage to fix it. Three, you can give us a call as well. Oh, three, four, or I could eight, take that straight back. I think I was being a bit of an idiot here. I didn't realise... Hang on, let me just shut this up. I didn't realise that we needed batteries... in the clock bit to actually make this do anything. I thought those were just for memory backup, but I put a couple of batteries in there. I don't know how well you see it because I wasn't actually looking where the camera was shooting, but putting batteries in the thing, the display has come on and it does play now. However, the reception on every radio station I've tried, even with an antenna connected and a decent ground, is pretty bad. It's very noisy. But at least now I can try out this single sideband thing, although that's not really going to do much on an ordinary AM station, but... Can make some noises with it. Be interesting when I find some stations that actually use that feature. Doesn't do anything on ordinary AM. Well, this is a bit of news. Sorry. 
Is this a bit of news that you'd like to share? Well, yes, it is. I was phoned up about our official uh, Ruby Riff, Ruby Wedding excursion. Oh. So, um, do you know anything about this? I don't know if you know anything no, about this. No, I don't know anything about this. Right. Can I come? Okay, well, I can fill you in. Go on. Um, I'm yeah, sure that the noise reduction on my laptop is making it sound a lot less noisy than it really is, but there is quite a lot of static in the background. Anyway, I'm just going to do a little bit of an IF alignment, see if that makes it any better, and then we'll see where we go. Right, okay. Now these, under these holes here, are the trimmers for the AM IF. The FM IF is over here, so let's just get this to play again. Now I don't have the right equipment to do this, I have to kind of jiggle this to get it to come on. Um, there we go. That's another little problem we're going to have to fix. I'm just going to adjust these until we get the best sound. I'm just doing this right here. Okay. That one's it works best. I think these were actually already okay. Come on, get in there. It seems to be right about there where it's the loudest. FM, however, seems to be an absolute no-go. I've got aerial fully extended. You can see, and all we're getting is static, no matter what I try to tune this into on FM. Alright, let's see if we can adjust the FM intermediate frequencies. And, of course, I've lost my screwdriver, but I can do that with. So I'll just have to use this. Okay, these are the FM IF coils. Just as soon as the station comes in, or anything. Oh, it's just all it's going to give us is static, I think. Yep, I don't know what we're going to do then. Okay, I think I'm just going to wrap up this video now because I've been rambling on way too long. And well, I thought I was making progress with this thing. But this thing seems to be acting very, very weird. Let me give you an example. I'll turn the power on. We're on FM right now. I don't know if you can see it very well, but um, the signal strength meter is registering full strength. I might have to turn this down a little bit so you can hear me over it. The signal strength meter is measuring full strength. As if we're picking up a station, but as you can hear, all we have is static. Now we can go up or down with the tuning, it doesn't matter. Just picking up nothing but static. No matter what I do. And even tune in a station, let's say, um, Q103. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Weirder still is that if I try to turn this off, after I've turned it on, it don't turn off. It stays on, no matter what I do. And this thing saying 90 sleep comes up. I don't know what that's all about. don't know if that's me doing something wrong or if that's uh, or quite what that is really. Weirder still is AM. Let's put it onto AM. This is the station that I had it tuned into, but look at what's on the display. All of the memory preset indicators are on, plus the scan one, two things on, and I don't think those things should be on at all. I don't think those should be on unless I press one of those buttons, which I haven't. But you know what? Doesn't matter. Let me just put that back onto what we had on, which I think was 1026. Now the strange thing is, as you can hear, 
absolutely nothing. But if I turn the power off, I'll just kind of jiggle this about a bit, then it comes on. So this is with the power turned off. Okay, off. And when it's like this, it does not respond. Turn it on, the sound goes away, but the keypad responds again. See? Let me just clear that. Turn it on, I mean turn it off. We get AM reception. Turn it on, we get no AM reception. I think this thing has gone absolutely bonkers. And yes, I did test the switch, the power switch, and the switch is absolutely fine, electrically. I tested it in both positions, all the contacts that should be closed were closed, and all the contacts that should be open were open, depending on which position the switch was in. So, nothing wrong there. Do you know what I think? I think it's this controller board right there. I think that has gone insane. I really hope that's not the problem, because I'm not going to be able to replace that. Or even service it. So anyway, if you've got any suggestions, because I really don't know where to go next with this thing. Because this has just got me absolutely stumped. I really hope that this isn't the deal. I mean, I've tested all the connections and they will test check out. Nothing is shorted and nothing is open, so... Anyway, that's just about it for this video. So, until next time, goodbye.